In this video, we're going to talk about the reaction which follows on from the link reaction. Okay, we're going to talk about the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle is probably something that you don't like uh, to study too much when it comes to cell respiration, just because it can seem quite daunting at first. But let's try and break it down into its simple steps. So the first thing I want you to know is that the Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, right? So we said that the link reaction occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, right? And that it converts pyruvate into this molecule of acetyl-CoA. But the, mate, the, the Krebs cycle also occurs in here, okay? So there's nothing, the location hasn't changed from where it was previously, right? So just, this is the mitochondrion. And in here we have the, the matrix, right? The mitochondrial matrix. Okay, so what happens in the Krebs cycle? Well, it's basically just that this acetyl-CoA compound is joined together with another compound, and then it undergoes a series of steps to eventually return back into the original compound. And along the way, it's gonna spit out some CO2, produce some reduced electron carriers and make some ATP. That is it, okay? And uh, sometimes students get a little bit uh, scared because they might look in some textbooks where all of these carbon compounds in between uh, these intermediates of the, of the cycle, they're given all these complicated names. Now I want you to know that if you look in your guidance, you do not have to know the names of the intermediate compounds of the Krebs cycle, okay? You just have to know how many carbon molecules make up these compounds, but you do not have to know their names. Okay, so let's just talk about what happens. So acetyl-CoA is that compound that we produced in the link reaction. And the CoA, the coenzyme A, is basically what you can think of as like a school bus, okay? It, it basically just has the function of bringing this acetyl compound to the link reaction, and then it kind of lets go of it, okay? So the acetyl-CoA will pass on the two carbon acetyl compound onto a four carbon molecule, okay? And then the CoA enzyme will return back to the link reaction and pick up some more acetyl, and then that kind of uh, like uh, keeps going, right? So it's, it's kind of like a shuttle to CoA like one of those airport shuttles that just goes back and forth, back and forth. So a four carbon molecule joins with a two carbon molecule to make a six carbon molecule. That'll probably make sense. And this six carbon molecule is then going to undergo a process where it loses a carbon molecule to form CO2. Now we said in the link reaction, this is called decarboxylation, right? Because it's losing carbon. So it's decarboxylation. And then it's also going to be oxidized, right? which is going to produce these reduced electron carriers. Because if this one is losing electrons, well then this, the electron carrier is gaining electrons, okay? So we're gonna call this process oxidation, okay? So it's the oxidation of the six carbon molecule or the reduction of the um, electron carriers. Both definitions will work. Okay, well if it loses a carbon molecule, well then it's going to return to a five carbon molecule, right? Or it's going to become a five carbon molecule. So we're gonna write five C down here. This five C molecule will then lose another carbon in another round of decarboxylation, right? Where you're hopefully starting to see a pattern here, dark decarboxylation. And then it's going to be oxidized to produce another reduced electron carrier, right? So we just have another round of oxidation. So basically the first two steps, uh, well, the second and the third step, if we consider this first step, second step, third step, the second and third step is just where you oxidize the molecule and decarboxylate it, that's it. And then finally, you have this four carbon molecule, right? And we know that we're gonna go back into a four carbon molecule. So we don't need to do any decarboxylation in this fourth and final step. Instead, we're just gonna reduce some more electron carriers, right? So NAD is gonna turn into NADH. And we have this other electron carrier, you can think of it like a cousin to NAD, which then is going to also be reduced. And so you have FAD turning into FADH2. And then finally, we have some ATP being formed. Now, remember, the process of cell respiration, the entire thing, the thing we want to make is ATP, right? Now, if you remember, so far we've gone through glycolysis, the link reaction, and now we're in the Krebs cycle. In glycolysis, we produced two molecules of ATP. In the link reaction, we produced zero. And in the Krebs, reaction, uh, sorry, the Krebs cycle, we produced four molecules. But I told you that when we do aerobic cell respiration, we're gonna be producing lots and lots and lots of ATP. 
But so this is kind of not really upholding its promise, right? That we're only producing four molecules of ATP. That's not that much. But what I'm telling you is that the secret or the, the key to why uh, aerobic cell respiration produces so much ATP is because of these electron carriers, okay? This is what we're interested in. All the way along in both glycolysis, the link reaction, and the Krebs cycle, we've been making loads of these reduced electron carriers. And that's the key point, okay? But the, we're going to get to why those become important in the next video when we talk about the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis. Um, but for now, just kind of I appreciate the Krebs cycle, right? It's just, it's just a cycle where you have a two-carbon molecule, a four-carbon molecule. They come together to make a six-carbon molecule. Then it becomes five, four, and then back to four. And then along the way, you have these either decarboxylation or oxidation or ATP formation. So the key point to take from this video is that the Krebs cycle comes after the link reaction. It occurs in the matrix of mitochondria. It involves four steps and along the way we're going to be reducing electron carriers, making some ATP and doing some decarboxylation. So in the next video we're going to get to how these reduced electron carriers can be used to make a lot of ATP.